Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight for Good News on Entertainment. I'm your host, Carly Boyette. We have a really fun show for you tonight. In just a moment, we are talking about a brand new musical that is telling the story of Jesus Christ in a unique and entertaining way. Two of the producers are from a very famous reality show. I'll give you a hint. Their faith and their beards were often celebrated in their reality show. And speaking of hints and clues, are you a fan of game shows like myself? Well, later we're going to have details about this year's National Bible Beat and how your kids can possibly win thousands of dollars just for studying God's Word. Okay, but first, back to the world premiere musical coming to Dallas, Texas this summer. This Broadway-style production is called His Story, the Musical, and features original music and is directed by a two-time Tony Award nominee. And it also has some exciting producers behind it as well, like Willie and Corey Robertson from Duck Dynasty. Dear Lord, hey, it's me, it's Mary. I've been wanting to talk for a while now, hoping you brought me a smile now. Dear Lord, yeah, I'm doing fine, but barely. I've been wanting to check in to make sure that you didn't forget about the Savior. Who is this Messiah that everybody's talking about? Because I need saving right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh, that was a soundbite from uh, the very talented uh, Anna, and her story is really cool, and I want people to make sure uh, and go to the musical's website because I know her whole story is posted there. It's fascinating to hear how this all came to be, but what an honor and my complete joy to be talking uh, with you guys now, the producers, one of several producers, I guess, uh, but Corey and Willie, Tell me, how did you guys find out about this and go, wait a minute, we want to be on board. We want to help get the word out about this. Well, I got a text message from the director who had been hired to, to work on this project. And it had been a while since I talked to him. And he just sent me a text uh, with one of the songs and said, hey, Willie, check this out. Let me know what you think. And uh, so we were not approached like to be any sort of celebrity endorsers or anything like that. He just asked me to check it out. And when I saw it, I was really moved by it. And I asked Corey, I said, uh, I think this is really great. I'd love to be a part of it. And I was hoping she agreed and she did. <laughs> yeah, it was really just one song and Willie was just all in and he brought it to me and I watched it and I was like, whoa, there's something really special about this. And then um, we got to see the whole thing. They had recorded a workshop in New York. So they kind of had the whole thing complete that you could see and we were like oh this is just full of scripture it's so you could tell it was just just felt really spirit spirit led and we were like who is the writer and then like you as you mentioned her story is absolutely incredible so we met her over zoom and we're just like this girl is the real deal <laughs> and it is just clear that um you know she just felt the call to do something for god and she just said yes and did it and here we are uh, I just get so excited, and this is part of uh, my joy and passion right now, is meeting people and promoting things where in the year 2023, there's so many cool and unique ways to tell the story of Jesus that maybe haven't been done before, but also good quality is important as well. Speak on kind of that, because you guys come from the entertainment industry, uh, of course, your popular reality show, um, but to be able to use these gifts and, and to see these type of productions, and there's a lot of fun stuff going on, again, that has a gospel message behind it. Yeah, that's been so neat for us to see because when we did our show, we had this little prayer at the end and it wasn't like anything overtly like, oh, this is a Christian show. This was just we're Christians and we have a show and we had this prayer at the end and it really made an impact. And then we got to be a part of God's Not Dead and just um, since then and saw the kind of success of that. And I just feel like there was just a hunger. You know, there people want more about that represents faith, that gives them hope that is positive and uplifting when in this world that, you know, is hard. And so since then, we've just seen things like The Chosen and um, Jesus Revolution just happened. That was just incredible. And it's really, really encouraging to see, to see that um, there is an audience for it, um, despite what some people might think there is an audience for um, Christian faith-based films, things that are just overtly about Jesus. 
and um, we're excited to be a part of this one. Yeah, and during uh, during COVID, I obviously like most people, I was home, and so I wasn't traveling, I wasn't speaking, and so really got involved in a ministry at our church, which was trying to uh, teach people how to share their faith. And so I was there like every week and really poured into that. So I, and I talked to someone else, and they were like, you should write a book on that. So I was writing this book about how, how to share your faith um, just in a common way. And, um, and I was in the middle of writing the book is when I got the text about the musical and and it was like, and my, my first thought was, I don't have time to work on anything else. I've got to get this book. But it was like God was telling me there's there's other ways as well, especially to this uh, generation of getting the gospel message out. And that's when I just said, well, well yeah, I mean, I got to be open to that. And especially with Anna writing it, someone who's young, we've experienced that with Sadie and our other kids, you know, when they want to do something, they've got a powerful voice. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, more powerful than ours because they're speaking to their own generation. And so I think we need to be, our ears need to be open to that uh, and, and help foster that for the younger ones who are trying to reach their generation. And so at that point we were like, yeah, we can be a part of this and they're not mutually exclusive. There's a lot of ways to get uh, the gospel out there. The gospel doesn't change, but you know, the different, avenues of how we get it out there can be different and so you know you may not put us with a broadway style musical or at least myself <laughs> but <laughs> anything that can get the gospel out uh that's in a new fresh way you know with the music and how she wrote it uh we were we were on board and then it was almost just like god took it from there and just said let's go and we were talking about this last year at this time and now just in this short amount of time we've put up this giant tent area for people to come watch this and we have actors and we have you know advertising and marketing and uh it just happened so quickly and it was not driven by any church any one pastor one church one anyone in fact we were on the stage announcing it there was not a pastor on the on the stage and, and i just kind of thought wow that's that's something that only god can do is to pull this thing together from people from broadway from people from new york people that you know honestly some of the people in the production don't even know what they're doing. They don't even have a clue about Jesus, which is again, to us, another opportunity uh, to share our faith. Well, and it's so interesting. You hear about uh, kind of the decline of families going to church. And I think now more than ever, I love that you brought up your daughter, uh, Sadie, as well, because, you know, youth and reaching the youth community is just, I mean, it's crucial. It really is. And if we can find these avenues to do this like this, my first thought was, oh, man, it's in Texas. Like, how am I going to get, you know, but this does seem like it's going to be a destination, you know, just, you know, I was talking with the folks over at the Ark Encounter the other day and, you know, they can, we can have these destinations across the country. Hopefully one day I'm assuming it might start touring as well. Yes, that is the, the plan is that it would go into all the world, of course. But right now, that is the call, like to come to Dallas where it is. I mean, I can't I cannot explain to you how great this location is. We were we decided to go into Dallas. We were like, that's such a central location. Everyone can fly in, drive in. But also um, we just were like, where are we going to put it? What are we going to do? Then they had this idea about the tent and we were just like, yes, how like fresh and new and exciting is that to be in this giant amazing tent and when you're inside you don't feel like you're in a tent trust me it's like it's it's a nice tent but um but anyway we we chose a spot it's called grandscape and it's almost like a downtown disney area it's like there's so much to do there there's putt putt and like all this and all these re nice restaurants and shopping and all that and there's a big ferris wheel so it is one of those things that you can make a family trip out of it or load up a youth group or a group and come to this place in Texas. Well, and, and I think that, you know, the whole nature of even the new Testament was a lot about going and traveling and taking the message to other places. And we've seen that even this year with, you know, this past year with, with Asbury and the college campuses, yeah. you know, where people just go, they just go and they show up. Uh, I think if this were in Broadway, if it was like, Hey, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, Wicked or Cats or Hamilton, everybody knows you got to go, you know, we're going to New York to go to a musical. And so and Corey and I've done that as well. So uh, it's not so far fetched. And I think it's easy to rail against culture and society and the bad things that are coming out and the bad things you know, that are being put out. So when we have something positive, I think as believers, we have to rally around those things and support and say, yes, 
we will come help this because this is what we want more of. And, and the more things that are successful, uh, the more of those things will be created just, just from a, a, a business standpoint, you know, uh, that's, what's going to happen. And you're right. The quality, uh, has come up. And I, when people come and see this, they'll know like, oh, this is not, this is not your high school, yeah. you know, musical or something that, you know, your local church puts on. These are, you know, professionals, people that do this. Uh, the tent gives, gave us way more um, latitude to do different things. So the ceiling also is a projection screen. And so we can set move with light and it's almost like a planetarium, like a Cirque du Soleil. Uh, the stage is in the round and there's an elevator that goes up and down. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, the technology we, we've been able to put with the story is just incredible. And I think when people come and see it, they go, oh, okay, now I see this is, this is a big, this is an event. This is something worth coming to. I think so as well. I'm excited to see where this goes. And, and uh, we're going to be praying uh, that more people come to Christ, know Christ a little bit better, maybe look at him with a different perspective uh, before. Before I let you go, though, I feel like you guys are just revving up. It's going to be a busy year for you guys. And I told you before we got started, it's just so exciting to see how your family has just been blessed and you keep growing. And now you have this movie getting ready to come out uh, yes. in the fall, I believe. Yes. Uh, on uh, Willie's dad. And I'm just so excited for people to, how are you guys feeling as again, I know it's probably kind of po post-production stage and, and getting ready to debut this fall, but speak on that if you can a little bit. Well, we've been really, I feel like we've been kind of emotional about the whole thing because it's such an awesome year for our family to get, we feel like we get to introduce his story first. And then in September, we're going to get to introduce our story, which ends with his story, like that's <laughs> the point of our story. And so it's really kind of this, I don't know, a really special year for us. But um, yeah, we've been working so hard on the movie and we, we just are really, really proud of it. It's been hard for the family because it's a tough part of their life story. Yeah. But for but God, that's what I love about it, because you guys have never been, you know, afraid to kind of go there yeah. um, and have that be part of your story. Well, were it not for that story, then none of us would be here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't, you know, that is the story that my parents heard uh, in their 20s that radically changed their lives. And uh, similar to Jesus Revolution, I mean, it's, when that happened, it changed everything for our family. And so that's why we've always been, you know, so inspired to, to tell others about the gospel because, you know, that there's millions of other Phil and Kay Robertsons out there, yeah. you know, nobodies who don't have any money, don't have anything going for them that are, you know, locked in sin and a terrible life and looking like they're going to divorce. But, you know, through Jesus's story, there's redemption, there's hope, there's something that can come out of that. And so our family is, is literally a tribute to that, to reflect that story. And um, it's, you know, it's brought us all the opportunities that we have and uh, the family staying together and then all through all the projects that we've done and able to now, you know, reflect the gospel, not just in America, but all over the world. And so um, uh, all those things have been amazing. It all comes down to, and this is the story of like, whether they were going to do it or not. It was like, it, and you realize when you watch the movie, like, wow, that was really close to just being obliterated, you know, nothing, you know, nothing good would have come out of that, but thank the Lord. But it that's did. what God does, right? Like, <laughs> look what he can do and make a beautiful masterpiece out of what some, you know, would be considered just finished. Uh, guys, it's been such an honor to get some time with you. I can't wait to catch up again later this year. I know you have so much on your plate, but I'm so excited to get the word out about his story, uh, the musical, which I do think is going to be a great destination uh, for people to go and see. And uh, again, I just look forward to, to catching up with you guys again, hopefully in a couple of months. Awesome. All right. Great Thanks so much. You. All right. God bless. Word. It was a word from him. The wind the world spinning, he said, Let the world spin. But first there was darkness, abyss for the night. The first thing that he said, Whoa. Let there be light. Oh, it's going to be really exciting to see how popular this musical gets. I have a great feeling about it. For ticket info, you can go to ticketmaster.com. And for more details on the show, go to his story, the musical.com. All right, now on to this year's National Bible Bee. Families have until the end of this month to sign up. And while this competition has been going on for years, maybe you're like me and haven't really heard about it yet. Let's find out more from the executive director. But first, take a quick look at some highlights from a previous National Bible Bee. 
It brings me great pleasure to welcome you all to the 2020 National Bible Bee Competition. There are thousands of kids who competed. You're in the top 15. There's so much anticipation leading up to this moment. Are you ready? Does it matter? Not really. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. According to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 11, 1 through 7. Daniel 9, 16 through 19. John 18, 35 through 38. Is it true that your mom actually wrote a song for every passage that you memorized? Every single one. No way. Praise God, she did it. <laughs> the King of Israel. The Lord is in your midst. That was a lot of scripture that was just recited. What, what's the longest one you've memorized? Psalms. The whole book of Psalms? <laughs> yeah, I was not expecting that. <laughs> Paul mentions Titus in which memory passage? Olivia. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 12. I just wanted that one so bad. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is the only one that can give us strength, and it gives me strength for everything, and that's just so beautiful. Perfect recitation. First place with $20,000. We have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise. All right, Brian, I'm so excited to talk with you. I shared with you before uh, we got started that I am a huge fan of game shows, and I love that there is this faith-based game show that's encouraging children to get in the word. Of course, I'm talking about the National Bible Bee. Uh, deadline is coming soon for families uh, to take part. So I want to make sure for families that have not heard of this yet, uh, Brian, how do you best describe what the National Bible Bee is? Well, it's a lot of things, but primarily the goal is to get young people excited and engaged in studying and memorizing scripture. And uh, it's really for kids of all ages and all abilities. Maybe they've been memorizing for years or maybe they've just getting started and they're or they're curious about what it looks like to memorize scripture. Um, that's really what our goal is, is we want to help them understand that they can do it. They can memorize scripture at whether they're four years old or 18 years old. They, they have the ability and we try to give them the tools to equip them to study scripture and memorize it as they go through the process. Well, and I'm so glad we're talking about this and we have the time to talk about this because it is when you see the video, even the, the little trailer, we just showed the clip of the National Bible Bee. You assume that these kids, you know, have been studying for years and that it's just something so hard and, and not really realistic. But you say no, like when when families sign up by the end of May, um, you actually give them curriculum to study over eight weeks over the summer. Right. And right. I was just thinking these kids are, you know, just given the Bible and saying, OK, try to memorize as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite a daunting task. And, you know, we've learned a lot over the years as the programs developed and grown. And, and every summer we develop a curriculum and we put it together in what we call a discovery journal. And everyone that signs up for the summer study gets a discovery journal delivered to their house. And that walks them through a specific chunk of scripture and they're studying it and then they're memorizing verses in that context of what they're studying. So it starts small. We just have 15 passages during the summer and they're they're You know, some of them are a little bit longer for the older kids, but for the younger ones, they're a little bit shorter. And we really try to reach each child where they are and give them an on ramp that makes sense for them, that they feel like, hey, I can do this. This is not, I'm not, it's not super difficult. You don't have to have superhuman abilities. You can just put a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and you can memorize God's word. So is it broken up into age groups? It is. So we have four um, main age groups. And so we have the beginner age, which is five and six. And then we have primary, which is ages seven to 10. Juniors are ages 11 to 14. And then our senior division is ages 15 to 18. And then, you know, there's lots of uh, the folks that sign up for the summer study have larger families and they have age ranging all over the place. And so um, for everybody that registers, we also have a preschool that comes with every registration. And that's for the little bitties, you know, three and four years old. Maybe it's just a coloring sheet, a two word passage that just gets them involved with their older siblings as they go through the summer study. You've been at this now for quite a while. The National Bible Bee has, I believe, 15 years uh, is what yes. you've said. Mm -hmm. Has Have you seen that this has made an impact on maybe some of those kids that were doing it in the beginning? I mean, uh, I'm hoping that's the answer. Yes, that mm -hmm. it's made an impact, a huge impact on their life and wanting to, the, to maybe study the Bible and know God more down the line. 
Yeah, you know, one of the, the, the most fun things that we get to experience over the time, I've, I've been with the National Bible Bee for eight years. And so one of my favorite things is to catch up with the alumni. And every year at our national competition, we have an alumni gathering. And there's, you know, 100 to 150 folks that have aged out of the program. They're, you know, 19 or older. And they're coming back to kind of share with us their life and what God's doing in their lives. And it's so cool to see some that are in ministry, some that are in missions work, some are accountants, and some are in medical school, and some are, you know, studying for their LSATs. And they're all over the place. They're in the marketplace. They're in ministry. And it's just so cool to see how, them giving that time in their developmental years towards studying scripture, memorizing scripture, internalizing it, it really is producing fruit in their lives. And, and that's the goal. It's not just mm-hmm. a rote memory competition. I mean, the competition is cool and it's exciting and we like that. Um, but really all that is, it's a means to an end. And that end is to get young people to love, to learn and to live out scripture in their lives. Oh, I just love this. And the prize money isn't bad. Let's talk about that. We haven't touched on that. So how does this work? Yeah. So, you know, the summer study is on ramp. But then in November, for those that are competition minded, there's an opportunity for them to compete for a prize pool that's over $100,000. And it's paid out in cash or scholarship. Uh, most of the the winners end up taking scholarship, right? It helps them pay for most or all of their college. And it's uh, so the top five in each division of those primary, junior and senior. So you could be, you know, eight or nine years old and winning a, a amount of money that could pay for your college tuition in 10 years. So um, it's it's obviously it's an incentive for them. And uh, but it's so interesting, you know, you, you hear those amounts of money, like, for instance, the, the first place senior winner, it's a fifty thousand dollar scholarship. And uh, you, you hear that, you think, well, that's that's pretty amazing. But when you talk to the students, the participants, they're like, hey, that's great. But man, what I learned and what I gained and what I was able to like hide God's word in my heart was so much more valuable than any amount of prize money I could win. So that's the real win for us is is getting young people to have a passion for God's word in a time and a culture we know where there's truth seems to be very slippery. We know that God's word remains mm-hmm. constant and we want to get that that truth and that absolute deep down in the hearts of these young people. Oh, I just love this. I want more of this. I want more (laughs) game shows. Just once a year isn't enough. Sorry, putting the pressure on. (laughs) What's your last word for parents who may be, or families who may be a little hesitant about embarking on this journey? I know it probably seems like a lot up front to maybe commit to this, uh, but like you said, I'd imagine there's no regrets at the end of it. You know, even if you weren't to finish it, I guess, but Mm -hmm. What is your take home uh, for families watching today, maybe parents, grandparents um, that might encourage others to maybe go on this journey? I would just say, you know, I would encourage you that you can start right where you are. You don't there, there's no pressure to feel like any uh, necessity to compete or to finish the entire discovery. I would say just start somewhere. That's where every young person that wins the finals started somewhere. They started at their level. And you'll have all the tools. We have an amazing community. There's online dashboards and we have our private curated social community that there, there's just a ton of resources there to help make sure that you can be successful at whatever level your child is at. And so I just encourage you, you know, take a step of faith, small commitment and watch what God does as your child spends time every day around his word. And that's what it's teaching is obedience, I would imagine, too, when, you know, there's maybe the days you're, oh, I, you know, maybe I don't. If we can get that in our youth and our kids to be obedient um, and see what God can do with that obedience at a younger age, you know, the goal is that they really see how that pays off at the end as well. Absolutely. Brian, thank you so much for your time. I can't wait. Hopefully we can check back. And because um, can people watch this at the end of the year? What happens when you actually have the big the big competition. Yeah. So we do live stream the national competition and that's in in November. It's November 12th through 16th this year. Um, And we do live stream it. And then every year we also do a post-production effort with it. And we release that show on Facebook. And that's actually going to be coming up at the end of the month, uh, at the end of May. And so uh, we'll stream the 2022 competition, kind of an abbreviated, a little bit produced version that kind of walks everybody through that. So you can catch us on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, and live at the event in November. All right. And the best place to start is your website, I'd imagine, to go ahead and sign up by the end of the month. Yep. Visit 2023.biblebee.org and you can read all about it and sign up there. 
All right, Brian, thank you so much. God bless uh, on this uh, adventure as you welcome new families aboard. And uh, we'll be excited to see uh, how it ends up uh, a little bit later in the end of the year. So hopefully we can check back in. Thank you, Carly. Thank you for having me. Okay, go to BibleBee.org to sign up. And remember, you have until May 31st to register. Before we leave you for tonight, we have an update on a movie we featured last year. Johnny Cash, The Redemption of an American Icon, is now available to watch from home. Take a look at this incredible story. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Johnny told me I'm my happiest when I'm performing. But sometimes Cash gets into trouble. You know, he's the kind of guy Walked into a room, everybody turned around. Because Johnny Cash was Johnny Cash. There was not one person that didn't respect Johnny Cash. He sort of lived in his own atmosphere. His unapologetic attitude, that's what made Johnny Cash cool. He was my hero for all the right reasons and all the wrong reasons. He surely had to think back and say, was it all worth it? We were all young and wild and crazy. How crazy were you? Oh, as crazy as you can get. Success, all the partying, all the money, all the fame, all that. Something is not going to last. And you begin to realize there's got to be something more. Past that is a guy who's broken and knows he needs God. It's hard to put a finger on and say, this is the person that he was, because there was so much to him. He was darkness and light living in the same body, and one fought against the other. He wanted to be the biggest thing in the world. And he became the biggest thing in the world. And then he stepped back and he said, that's not all there is. There's no lonelier place on earth for a man to be than separated from God. He faced himself, he faced his temptations, he faced his worldliness and came out wanting to be right with God. It's a biblical precedent that God uses complicated people. It's all fleeting, as fame is fleeting. So are all the trappings of fame. Again, the movie is now available to watch on digital platforms like Apple and Amazon Prime Video, or you can watch it on demand with satellite networks like Dish and DirecTV. We hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Next week, we hear more about the latest film to debut on Pure Flix this month called Sun Moon. Until then, I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you again right here on your Christian television network.